Hi, I'm George Levy. I believe we're changing the world one blockchain at a time. And if we use this technology properly, we are bound to make the world a better place for everyone. So to help make that happen in this video, I will be talking to you about dApps. A dApp is short for a decentralized application, and dApps are a very important part in the world of blockchain. So in this video, I will tell you exactly what dApps are. Keep watching. Let's begin by exploring a definition of what a dApp is. A dApp is an open source application that operates autonomously on a decentralized public blockchain. It cannot be controlled by any single entity and it generates and uses tokens by following a standard cryptographic algorithm. Now what we will do is we will digest every single element in that definition so you know exactly what that means. Let's analyze that definition by breaking it down into its individual components. For starters, a dApp needs to be open source. By being open source, what it means is that anybody can look at the source code. This prevents anybody from hiding anything inside that source code. This is very different from closed source software, in which case somebody could simply make modifications and some people may not know what's inside. So by default, dApps need to be open source. Additionally, dApps need to be able to operate autonomously. This means that once a dApp is set in motion, it needs to run on its own without any tampering or interference by any third parties. It must simply run on its own. That dApp must also run on a public blockchain. By being on a public blockchain, it means that anybody can participate in the usage of this dApp. This is different from a private blockchain because in a private blockchain, you can set permissions. Some people can and some people can't. Let's look at the example of Bitcoin because Bitcoin is actually a dApp. It's a decentralized application which runs on a public blockchain. In Bitcoin, anybody can use Bitcoin. Another public blockchain is Ethereum. Now let's go to the next requirement of a dApp. A dApp must simply have no single entity that actually makes the decisions for it and no single entity can control the majority of its tokens. Let's look at Bitcoin. Any changes to Bitcoin need to be done in consensus with the Bitcoin network. No single entity can make any changes to Bitcoin because there is no CEO of Bitcoin. This is the same for dApps. When we go to the next topic, dApps must operate and generate using tokens. We talked about Bitcoin. In the case for anybody to be able to use Bitcoin, they need to have Bitcoins. That's what you send and receive. But also, new Bitcoins are generated by the miners. This is how they're actually compensated for processing and confirming the transactions. And finally, those tokens need to be generated using a standard cryptographic algorithm. A standard cryptographic algorithm implies something like proof of work, which is used in Bitcoin. And there are other ones as well. And that is how you define what a dApp decentralized application is.